moving towards the next chapter of the chloro alkali industries we are going to discuss different product that are being associated with this chloro alkali industries well there are four major product of this industries the first one is the naoh or we can say caustic soda then we will discuss about the chlorine gas and lastly we will have sodium carbonate and sodium bicarbonate all these four products are being very important for the exam point so here you can see that this chloro alkali industry is very important industry in the india around 75 percentage of the chemicals that use for the industrial purpose are being from these industries you can see here there are different major products which include the first one as the soda s as you can see that this soda s is also known as the sodium carbonate that is na2co3 and there is one more product of this particular thing that is known as the sodium bicarbonate that is na2hco3 then there is another product which is very important very popular that is caustic soda which is again the alkali and it is known as the sodium hydroxide and its chemical formula is naoh then lastly we will understand the product of the chlorine that chlorine gas is being used for different purposes but mainly it is used to manufacture acid of hydrochloric acid that is your hca this chloro alkali industry is being used largely in many products so let's just discuss what are the different application of this particular chloro alkali industries as you can see here on the screen that the major industries that utilize chloro alkali chemicals in one or another form are soap and detergent industries as we very well know that soap and detergent industry are largely dependent on caustic soda this alkali material is find its large application in soap and detergent industries then we have fibers and plastic industries plastic industry also utilize this chloro alkali in one or another form then we have petrochemical industries various petrochemicals use alkali as their raw material right then we have paper and pulp industries this particular caustic soda is being largely used in the paper and pulp industry in order to produce papers then we have fertilizer industry which we already have covered in the previous session this chloro alkali either sulfuric acid or naoh is being largely used in the fertilizer industries as well then we have explosive industry this alkali can be used for the explosion purpose as well and lastly we have textile industries textile industries utilize chlorine for the many purpose the major product of this chloro alkali industry are the caustic soda and soda ash so let's understand about the caustic soda and chlorine right and we will see first how do we can manufacture caustic soda that is your naoh and chlorine gas as you can see here that sodium hydroxide that is your naoh is also being known as the caustic soda you can see here which is highly caustic metallic base which is white in a color and solid and in the solid form which is available in different shape that is it, it is available in a pellets flex and even in the crystal forms sometimes granules of this caustic soda is being also available and even 50 percentage aqueous solution of the caustic soda is being largely used in different industries so along with this caustic soda chlorine is also being manufactured both the thing can be manufactured by the same process here are the some properties of the chlorine gas as you can see here that its molecular weight is around 70.9 g per mole its melting point is minus 101.6 degrees celsius while its boiling point is 34.6 degrees celsius it is very much soluble in water and alcohol and its appearance is greenish yellow gas so if you have seen that hcl gas that is greenish and yellowish right so now after discussing let's just focus on the properties of the naoh as you can see here its molecular weight is 40 grams 
per mole. Then its melting point is around 318 degrees Celsius. And its boiling point is very large, around 1390 degrees Celsius. It is very much soluble in water, but it is re exothermic reactions, hence it generates large amount of the heat. And it is available in a flex, granule, crystals, and in a lump. Even it is available in an aqueous solution with the 50 percentage concentration. Then its density is very much higher than the water. It is having 2.13 gram per ml at 20 degrees Celsius. So these are the all properties of NaOH and chlorine that can be asked for the one marks or two marks in your competitive exams. Now let's understand different manufacturing process that are being associated with this NaOH and chlorine gas. As you can see here that it is being produced by the electrolysis of the brine. So brine solution can be electrolyzed in order to produce NaOH and chlorine gas. This chlorine gas is being liberated at anode and caustic soda along with the hydrogen is being produced at the cathode. So in the operation of the electrolysis, cathode generates this caustic soda and hydrogen gas while on the anode electrode we have chlorine gas. We will understand this electrolysis process in very depth. This process is conducted in the membrane, diaphragm and in the mercury cell. So with different type of the cell we can produce NaOH based on the different varieties. So its concentration can be changed by using different type of the membranes. So we will understand all this type of these membranes. So we will understand all these three types of the cells. And again these cells are very important for the exam point of view. Then at the last around 80% of the caustic soda and 95% of the chlorine gas that is being produced in the India is from the electrolysis of the brine process. So you can say that this electrolysis of brine is very important process for the manufacturing of this alkali materials. We will understand this electrolysis in depth. So now here you can see that on the screen that what are the different raw material required for the production of the NaOH and chlorine gas by the method of the electrolysis. Of course we are going to need that the brine because it is the very basic and important raw material for the production of these chemicals. Around concentration of 35% of the brine is required. Then there is NaCl and HCl and water. So we will require NaCl that is your salt and hydrochloric acid and water for the, for the production of the aqueous solution. Then we are going to require 98% concentrated sulfuric acid. So now after this, let's just focus on the chemical reactions. This all chemical reactions are very important. So I will recommend that you remember all these chemical reactions. So it will be very easy to draw the flow sheet of this particular chemical. And later based on this thing, you can also write the process description as well. So let's understand what are the chemical reactions for this process. As you can see here on the first place, your NaCl that is your salt from the brine solution decomposes in the Na plus ion and chlorine ion. This particular reaction is known as the ionic conversion in which NaCl breaks into the ions of Na, Na plus and chlorine that is our Cl negative. Then the Cl negative aqueous solution that is your electrolyte is converted into the chlorine gas and two electrons are being liberated on the anodic compound, on the anode electron. This particular reaction is also being known as the anodic oxidation. Then if we focus on the Na plus ion, then this aqueous solution of Na plus that is your electrolyte is combined with the H2O and two electrons coming out of the chlorine are now reacted in order to produce hydrogen gas and OH negative ion. Now this reaction is also being known as the cathodic reaction. So as the overall reaction you can see here that Na plus and 2 Cl2 plus H2O gives Na2 to OH negative chlorine and hydrogen. So by this means we can produce NaOH as the aqueous solution and chlorine gas is being liberated on the anodes. So these are the chemical reactions. So now having said that let's just quickly focus on the flow sheet for this particular chemical.
as you can see here this particular flow sheet start from this point where we feed our brine water with the nsca so this brine water is being concentrated with the supply of the nsel as you can see here in the concentration tower so our first step is to concentrate our brine solution up to certain level after which we produce precipitation of the nsel salt so we separate this excess of the nsel salt from the solution after which we process the filtration operation in which we filter our brine and by mean of iron exchange we purify our brain so that our cell cannot be damaged again this cell can be of a different way. here in this particular example i have shown the membrane cell you can see here this is the membrane cell but instead of this we can also utilize diaphragm cell even the mercuric cell as well we will understand all of this type of the cell in a upcoming videos so now after ionization after so now after iron exchange the purified brine is sent to the cell or specifically mercury cell in which this particular section is your known as the anode while this section is being known as the cathode inside which we have supplied our electrolyte and this particular blue line is being known as the membrane this particular membrane can only be allowed to iron to pass through it and it do not allow nsl to pass through it so only ions of na plus and cl minus can pass through this particular membrane right so as you can see that this particular section is known as the anode chamber and this section is known as the cathode chamber and we supply external electricity to both the electrodes and we carry out our electrolysis process which ultimately generate chlorine gas on the anodic compound so as you can see here this particular line shows the chlorine gas which is passed through the tubular reactor which is known as the tubular cooler reactor inside which we pass cooling water so that we can cool down our chlorine gas and after which it is being scrubbed in the scrubber in order to manufacture pure form of the chlorine we use concentrated sulfuric acid in order to scrub all the impurities associated in this chlorine gas as you can see here this scrubber we are supplying h2so4 and we are liberating 75 percentage of the dilute sulfuric acid and product gas coming out of this scrubber is sent to the one more scrubber scrubber from which we supply caustic acid in order to remove all the impurities and we can ultimately get pure chlorine gas on the another side from the cathode compound we liberate two products one is your hydrogen gas and another one is the aqueous solution of the anode this aqueous solution is being again cooled in a tubular cooler where we supply cooling water and the product stream coming out of this tubular reactor is now sent to the evaporator where we concentrate our anode wedge the concentration of anode wedge can be increased to the desired level by using different types of the evaporator we can use multi stage evaporator as well in order to achieve higher concentration of the anode and we remove excess of the water with the supply of this steam so at the bottom we supply steam and from the top we pass aqueous solution of the anode now after this thing this anode is being dried and all the moisture is being removed so now this granules of the anode can be separated out from this dry and they are directly sent to the packing area where we pack our anode and sold so with this type of the process system we can produce granule type of the anode or even flex and the pellets of the anode so this was the entire process this so this was the entire process flow sheet for the production of the chlorine gas and anode this is again very important for the example so now let's just quickly revise entire flow sheet with the help of this pen initially we have started our flow sheet with the brine water which is again concentrated with this salt that is your nos in the concentration tower so first we increase the concentration of the brine up to desired level after which we perform we perform precipitation operation in which the excess of the salt is being removed which is then sent to the filtration unit where we filtrate 
different impurities and we get ultimately pure form of the brine solution. To remove further the impurities associated in the brine, we perform ion exchange operation as well. As you can see here, we perform ion exchange to remove all the impurities and we get purely form of the brine. After which it is being sent to the membrane cell or any kind of the cell. This cell can be of a different type such as diaphragm cell, mercury cell or this particular cell that is membrane cell in which this section is being known as the anode and this section is known as the cathode cell. Both are being separated with this membrane, right? So this membrane is a special kind of the membrane which only allow ions to pass through it. That is ion of Na plus and Cl minus can only be passed through. And from the anodic section, we can produce chlorine gas as you can see here. This chlorine is now sent to the tubular cooler in which we cool down the gas and after which we purify them into the scrubber. In the first scrubber, we scrub with the concentrated sulfuric acid and in the second scrubber, we use caustic solution in order to remove all the impurities and ultimately we get pure form of the chlorine gas. Now on the later, in the second side, you can see that on the cathodic chamber, we generate two products. One is the hydrogen gas that can be used for the different purpose. And the second product is your aqueous solution of the caustic soda that is being again sent to the tubular cooler. After cooling, it is being sent to concentration tower that is known as the evaporator in which we increase the concentration of the NaOH and we produce granules from the dry. So on the application of hot air, this dryer converts the NaOH into the pellets or even in the granules. Then this granule or the flex form of the NaOH is sent to the packing unit where we pack our NaOH and sold as the product of the NaOH. So this was the entire flow sheet for the production of the chlorine and NaOH. Now let's just quickly understand the process description of this process. As you can see here on the screen that initially, initially the brine is saturated with the NaCl. If you recall the previous flow sheet, here we have added NaCl in order to achieve saturated solution of the brine. Then later it is undergo the precipitation, filtration and iron process in order to remove different impurities of calcium and magnesium. After which this brine is being electrolyzed by passing 3 to 6 volt of the electric current in the membrane cell. Where porous anode and electrode are being separated by the selective membrane that I have already shown in the flow sheet. Which only allow the positive ions to pass through it and does not allow negative ions. So only Na plus ion can pass through this membrane and Cl minus can be restricted. As I have explained in the previous example that both the ions can pass through it. But it is not that much true. Only positive ion can pass through this membrane cell. Then chlorine ion are oxidized at the anode and they lose electron as per the chemical reaction as we have seen in the previous, in the previous slides. And it becomes the chlorine gas that can be cooled with the tubular cooler and further it is scrubbed and dried with the help of 98% caustic 98% sulfuric acid and then the caustic solution respectively. And this purified chlorine gas can be sent for the commercial purpose. On the other side of this electrolysis, the cathodic reaction takes place which converts NaOH plus and NOH negative ion to produce caustic solution. This caustic soda can be liberated on the cathode. This caustic solution is cooled in the cooler with the cooling water and concentrated in the evaporator by using steam that we have seen in the flow sheet. Then this caustic solution is dried and stored. In the anodic side, chlorine is continuously used from the brine solution. So brine become very big. So after some time, we, we have to add makeup brine. Hence brine is taken from the chamber and reconcentrated with the help of NaCl. As you have seen in this image that this brine is now taken out and it is again reconcentrated as it is being become now weak as we remove chlorine out of it. Right? So this was the process description for the entire process. Now in the next video we will understand different, different types of the cell that are being used for the production of the NaOH and chlorine. Till then 
keep watching keep learning thank you